Hi, and welcome to my guide of the updated version of While Gothic Sleeps. After the quest has been updated on the 24th of July 2024. The quest and skill requirements are a bunch. Make sure to go to your quest log and verify that you have completed all of the requirements. I just need it. My inventory currently is quite cluttered and that is because I have brought every single item that is required and recommended and all of the teleports for the entire quest. But I don't suggest you to bring all of these items at the start of the quest. Since I've split up this quest gate into 5 parts, I'm also going to be banking before starting the next part. Let's immediately go to part 1 which is also going to be the longest part of this quest. I just need it. A knife, 800 coins, a lantern lens made from mantle gloss, a sapphire lantern from the Tears of Gothic's quest, simply use a sapphire on a regular oil filled lantern, a way to spellbook swap to lunars, you could use your or someone else's occult altar in their POH, if you're using someone else's altar you will need to be in world 330 and teleport to Remington, or you could teleport to Lunar Isle. They also need the runes to cast 4 times NPC contact, which are 4 more cosmic runes, 4 astral runes, and 8 air runes. Then also, I suggest you to verify that your weight is at least 1 kg or higher. For the recommendations, is 1 antidote dose is enough. Then also, a weapon to kill 2 archers. And their defense is pretty low, you can use any weapon to your liking but they also have one special attack and can deal up to 100 damage if you do not pray correctly. So therefore, maybe bring also a couple of food. Hello, future me here. A quick note is that magic is the slowest kind of style out of the three, so I suggest to use ranged with the blowpipe, that would be the fastest, else use melee. I mean, magic works, but holy fuck, this is slow. Then also a weapon to kill two warriors. These ones are quite tanky and they're weakest against bolts and magic. So I'm going to be using a trident. Next is a seed dibber if you haven't completed the barbarian farming training yet. Then also one stamina potion should be enough and have approximately five empty inventory slots. By the time I need five empty inventory slots, I will drop some food. For the teleports for part 1 are 1 to the Feldip Hills, 1 to Fight Arena, I'm gonna be using the Watchtower teleport, 1 to the Spirit Tree, I'm gonna be using a POH or maybe the Grand Exchange teleport, 1 teleport to Taverly, I've just moved my house to Taverly, so I'm gonna be teleporting to my house, 1 teleport to McGruber's Wood, I'm gonna be teleporting to a Fairy Ring and use the code ALS, also 4 teleports to Falador Castle, the quickest teleport would be to use the Achievement Cape teleport, or you could use a regular Falador teleport. Then also one teleport to the Warrior's Guild, I'm going to use Games Necklace. Then also one teleport to restore your stats and to prepare for part 2. Where to start this quest is here in the center of Taverly. Let's start this quest by talking to Ivy Sovista in Taverly. Select option 1 to start the quest and she will make us go upstairs. Let's do so, and there we'll find Theorisk. Let's talk to him, and after speaking to him, we'll get ambushed by two assassins who followed us. First, use Protect from Missiles and defeat both archers. The archers do have one special attack, which is if one of the two archers shouts now, once the green arrow has hit you, use Protect from Melee, and then switch back to protect from ranged. And continue with your fight.
Alright, once the two archers have been defeated, it seems to be quite slow using magic to be honest. Ranged was the quickest, melee was second quickest, magic was the slowest in my opinion. Once the fighting is over, let's talk to Therisk for quite some time. And after speaking to him, we will need to get a brawl and a dirty shirt. To do so, we'll first need to go to the fight arena. So, let's make our way to fight arena. And southwest of fight arena, there is a big bar. If you go north from there and enter the second building north, you'll find an NPC, the Laundra. Let's talk to him and select option 1 if you've brought 500 coins. Select option 2 to charm if you've brought the Ring of Keras. And he will give you the dirty cloth. After you have the dirty shirt, we'll need to make our way to the Fildip Hills. Do so, and then go to the Hunter Expert, who's located on the map next to the Fildip Hills Teleport Scroll. If you don't have these, then you can also use the fairing code AKS. Once you're here, let's talk to the Hunting Expert and select option 2 about Brawl. Or select option 3 if you have 99 Hunter about Brorf. And you will receive a Mortmire Fungus. Next, exit west and you'll find an axe in a stump. If you lack inventory space, maybe drop two items temporarily, take the axe and then go west. Chop down any jungle tree on your way west and you'll find a pit next to a jungle tree. Set it up. And then use the Mortmire Fungus on the trap as bait, and a Brove will spawn. Now simply wait until the War Brove is trapped. Dismantle the collapsed trap and then make your way back to the Hunting Expert. And use the Unconscious Brove on him, and he will train it for you. Next, we will need to make our way to the Khazard Battlefield. The closest teleport would be to use a Spirit Tree option number 3. So simply teleport to any Spirit Tree, select option 3, and once you have arrived, let's go southwest. And go southwest, south of the Trinon Village Gnome Tracker number 2, there will find a banner with a Zamrock sign, and just north of it, you'll find a broken table. Once you're standing next to it, drop the Brorf, then use your dirty shirt on it, and then the broken table will get a search option. Once it does, you may pick up the Brorf, or not, doesn't matter, but this guy is now storable in your POH, just like a cat, and then search the broken table and climb down. Next, open the door and go north. And from this point, we will need five empty inventory slots. So I think I'm just gonna release the Brorf. Before releasing the 6 kilogram weighing Brorf, make sure that your weight is 7 or above before releasing it. And then I'm just gonna be dropping some food. And I'm going to be searching the northern chest, the only searchable thing in this dungeon, to find some runes. Once you have some elemental runes, let's follow the dungeon and climb down some stairs. South, you should find a old battered door. Click on it and you'll find the text, further access prohibited. One of the letters in the word prohibited will represent a rune. If it is the O, then it represents the mind rune. If it is the H, then it is the Earth Rune. If it is the E, then it could be the Air or Fire Rune. And if it is the D, then it is a Water Rune. This is random for everyone. Use your Rune on the Old Batter Door 
to unlock it. If you've used the wrong rune on a door, you'll take up to 25 damage. Okay, once you weigh 1 kilos or more, you are allowed access into the next room with a couple of floor wires. Run around the room until you find a floor wire that is thicker than the rest. Follow this one to a bookcase. Search that bookcase and then one other floor wire in this room will also change thickness. Follow that new wire to the next bookcase, click to continue and do so five times. Simply look around the room for a thicker floor wire, follow it and search that bookcase. Right, once the gate has been unlocked, open it and then right click on the spiral staircase and search and read if you managed to disable the trap. If you did, climb up and next to you you'll find a curved desk. Next we will need at least three empty inventory slots. Let's search the desk to find the first notes. Next to you you should also find a waste paper basket. Pick it up rummage into it to find a ruby key, then go five tiles to your west or four and search the most northern bookcase. Select option one and this will spawn a spiral staircase to the bedroom. Once you're able to climb up, do so and search the bed. Next, open the bed chest and select yes to unlock it. Next, right click on the bed chest and search, so you do not get damaged by the trap, up to 20 damage, then open the bed chest and then search to find notes number 2. And then go back downstairs. To be able to leave this room, because we are currently teleblocked, we will first need to go south and inspect the painting. It is marked with a door on the minimap. Then climb over the broken wall and inside you'll find a pressure gauge. Check it and this will say the amount of kilograms that you've started this puzzle with downstairs. It will say X amount of tickets. Once you know this, go to your equipment and see how much you currently weigh. Next, we will need to take the difference of our current weight and the amount of tickets, go west and take from the pile of weights and take the difference in weights between your current weight and how much it read on your pressure gauge. For most people, it should be just 2 kilos. Next, go north and climb over the broken wall and then go east of the curved desk. By the way, if you happen to weigh less than what you've started with, also take the difference, but keep the weights inside of your inventory. For everyone else, put the difference in weight on the stone statue and then open the eastern door to exit. Next, make your way back to Taverly. Outside of Taverly and let's return to Theorisk. Upstairs from the quest start. After speaking to Theorisk, we will need to defeat two warriors, which do not use any special attack and just use melee. However, they are quite tanky, so I suggest you to bring either magic or bolts. Using melee and darts will work, but it will take quite a lot longer. Once you think you have enough prayer points to last the entire fight, let's make our way to the entrance of the Guardians of Armadale hideout which is just the hut of McGruber's wood. The fastest teleport, I think, would be to use a fairing code ALS. You could also use a ranging guild teleport or a Sears village teleport. Let's head to the entrance of the hideout of the Guardians of Armadale and fight the two Axemen.
once you've defeated the X-Men, uh, let's talk to Idria, and she will say to meet her at Falador Castle. Once she has departed, uh, let's depart ourselves, because she leaves without us. Uh, let's teleport to Falador or Falador Castle using your achievement cape, and let's go into the eastern room of Falador Castle. Which is just east of the achievement diary and the quest sign. Enter the room, there you'll find three NPCs. Let's talk to any of them. And select option 1 and they will teleport you to Draenor Village to plant a Tele Orb on a Shady Stranger. This Shady Stranger is located between the Draenor Market and the Willows. Use the Tele Orb on the Shady Stranger. If this fails and he attacks you, just run away and try again. Once it has been planted, teleport or return to Felder Castle to say that the deed is done. This time we cannot choose who to talk to and we will need to talk to Akrisai. Doing so will trigger a cutscene. After the cutscene is over, we will need to press 1 twice. The first one is to obtain a free Snapdragon Seed that is required for the quest. And the second is another free teleport, but this time to Port Serum. So continue with your conversation and select option 1 twice. Once you've arrived in Port Serum, let's make our way to the northwestern building and let's go to Betty. I'm also going to be destroying the Novarius nodes to save some inventory space, those are no longer needed. And let's talk to Betty, select option 2 and then 1 about the enriched Snapdragon Seed. And then once again, sounds good to buy a pink die. Next, use this pink die on your lantern lens. And then go stand in the doorway, just like in the Hand of the Sand Quest, and use the rose dinner lens on the counter to make an enriched snapdragon seed. Once we have this, take it from the counter and let's go plant this in Falador Castle. So, let's teleport to Falador Castle and this time let's go up the western tower. Open the western door, just like in the Black Knight's Fortress quest Go past Ceramic Voss and go to the top floor. Plant your enriched Snapdragon seed in her patch. And let's go talk to Idria for our next task. You could use another Achievement Cave teleport to go downstairs, or you could use the stairs. Anyway, let's talk to Idria, and she will say that we will need to talk to four more NPCs. Three of which can be spoken to directly, but the fourth one must be contacted with NPC contacts, so why not just use NPC contacts to talk to all four? So, go to yours or someone else's POH. If you use someone else's POH, you will need to use the World 330 and make your way to Rivington, and use the Occult or the Lunar Altar to swap your spellbook to Lunars. If you don't want to use either of those options, you could also make your way to Lunar Isle and swap it the original way. Once you've swapped your spellbook, let's cast NPC Contact on Doriel. Select option 2 about Lucian. After speaking to Doriel, 
we will need to use empty contact on Macha. Once again, option two, a bad Lucian. Then also, NPC contact on Dirtal, which is the third one from the right on the second row. Once again, option two, a bad Lucian. And then lastly, one more NPC contact on the bottom row, Sirius, the second one. With this NPC, we don't need to select any options. Once we've spoken to those four NPCs, let's change our spellbook back to standard. And let's make our way back to Felder Castle, since the unreached Snapdragon Seed has fully grown. Let's go back to our enriched Snapdragon Seed at the top of the Western Tower. And harvest it. We do not need a spade to harvest this enriched herb. Once we have the enriched herb gathered from the top, we'll need to make our way back to Idria. So use your achievement cave teleport or use the stairs. Never mind, you do not need to talk to Idria, you need to talk to Therisk, who is the most western of the three NPCs, the druid from Taverly. And we will get a Truth Serum. Once we have this, let's use the Snapdragon on Truth Serum to make it super. Then go to the southeastern corner and search the drawers. Maybe first open and then search for some papyrus and charcoal. Then enter the cell gate or open the cell gate and use the super true serum on the shady stranger. and he will draw us a suspect sketch. Once we have this, let's exit the cell gate and talk to any of the three characters. After we have spoken to these, we will need to recruit three lost NPCs, and all of them are at the Warriors Guild. So let's teleport to the Warriors Guild using your attack cape or the game's necklace, and let's talk to Gommel in front. Select option 2, about Lucian. And after the conversation is over, enter the Warriors Guild and the first NPC is the guy with the green hat and the fancy white feather. Select option 2, about Lucian. And after speaking to him, Let's continue going west and let's go upstairs. We need to talk to the final NPC, the NPC that sells the strength cape. But before talking to that NPC, let's go into the armory and trade Anton and buy one bronze medium helm and one iron chain body for 280 coins. Next, let's go north and let's talk to Sloan, Sloney. Open the heavy door, let's talk to him, and select option 2 about Lucian for the final recruited NPC. Next, it is time to bank and prepare for part 2. To restore my prayer and my other stats, I'm going to Ferris Enclave and using the free for all portal. Let's go to the bank. What we may deposit is our knife the axe, the antidote, as well as the mind, air, water, earth and fire runes, as well as your seed dibber, and you may destroy both the nodes of Movario, as well as the rose tinted lens. I just did it. A bronze medium helm, iron chain body, an unpowered orb, three cosmic runes, and 30 elemental runes or a elemental staff. Also make sure that you are on the standard spellbook, then, for the NPCs that we need to defeat in the next part, they also use protection prayers, so we will need to bring at least two different combat styles. These NPCs are also quite tanky, so I suggest to use the styles that they are weakest against. They are weakest to magic, second weakest to crush, and third weakest 
to heavy ammo such as bolts. I think I'm going to be using a trident and crush. For the recommendations is one stamina potion and one prayer potion will be enough and approximately eight empty inventory slots, especially when the teleport runes are going away. Then for the rest of the inventory is going to be some good food. Now for the final recommendation is to wear some melee tank gear, because we're going to be needing to defend ourselves in multi-combat with a lot of NPCs using all three combat styles at us. I'm going to be using protect from magic and the armor should protect me for the melee attacks and the archer attacks. For the teleport is just going to be one teleport to Falador Castle and one teleport to any bank to prepare for the first boss fight out of two of this quest. Once you think you are ready, let's make our way back to Idria or the three NPCs on the ground floor of the eastern room of the White Knight's castle. And we will need to talk to Akrisai. The druid should be the center NPC. And talking to him will trigger a cutscene. After this cutscene is over, we should receive a free teleport to the Black Knight's castle. And in there, we will unlock the first boss room of two of this quest. So once the conversation is over, select yes to teleport to Ice Mountain. Let's go north, equip our disguise, which is the bronze medium helm and the iron chain body, and let's go through the front door, just like in the Black Knight's Fortress quest. Then push the wall just north, the wall just a bit north, and then climb down the ladder, just like in the King's Ransom quest. From there, go a bit southeast, between the crates, they'll find a tile use any of the charge or spells on it, doesn't matter which one, to open the door. Climb down. And next, it is a mini version of the Water Birth Dungeon. Make sure that you equip your tank here and start with using Protect from Range. North, go to the bridge and jump across by clicking around the edges until you see a something red. Then use Protect from Melee and go north. At the crossroad, go east and use Protect from Magic. Then go north at the wall, click on it to climb up that wall and keep using Protect from Magic. Go north. And next, keep going north, drink stamina potion, don't forget that. And go into the western cavern. Keep going west, northwest, tanking all the rangers and the melayers keep going north following these tunnels and first open the western door this will take us back and unlock the shortcut to the boss next go through the solid door once again to make our way back open the northern door and here we will need to fight some elite black knights combat 138 Use Protect from Melee and start attacking. We will need to defeat three of them to obtain the three pieces of their uniform. If you're using magic and ranged, make sure that you unequip your melee tank gear first. And defeat three elite black knights.
once you have the full uniform, first equip it, then go into the eastern room, and then go back into the western room, because these NPCs have a short aggression zone. Next, we will need to gather 7 items in the western room. If you don't have enough inventory space, you may drop your bronze medium helm as well as the iron chain body. First up, north is at the key rack to find a, well yeah, key, then go south and search the table with the lobster on it to take a lobster and restore potion. Do not consume these. Then go south and search the southern desk to find a strange tele orb. Do not search the western table, we're gonna be doing that in 5 minutes. Then open the southern wardrobe, then search it and take the 3 dark squall robes. Once we have these 7 items, let's go back through the solid door in the southwestern corner and then go east. Continue running east and go through a gate. Once we have crossed that gate, go a couple of tiles northeast and open the next gate. Here we will find Silith. Let's first equip the Dark Squall rope set. Once that is equipped, let's use the lobster or any kind of other food on Silith. And then also a restore potion. Do not empty it, use the dose on him. And since we have already equipped the Dark Squall rope set, he will immediately change into the Elite Black Knight uniform. Next, select option 1, let's go, and open the gate. Let's make our way back the way we came from. We have completed part 2 out of 5. Next is the third part, which is the first boss fight out of 2. Let's first head back into the northern room, where we've defeated the three elite black knights, and then go a little bit east, they will find a map board. Then talk to Silif, and he will start looking at it. Also, you will receive a second bigger tele orb. This thing we will need to plant in the cloth of the second boss. But I am definitely not prepared for that. Let's first go to the bank and do so. Once again, I'm going to Ferrox Enclave to restore all of the stats. For the first boss fight, let's just go to the bank and deposit everything from our equipment and our inventory. The items needed for the first boss fight is the rope set of the Dark Squall, as well as both the Tele Orbs, the Strange One and the Regular One. Also, the boss is immune to all forms of ranged and melee damage, as well as powered staffs, such as the Warp Scepter, Trident of the Seas, and the Tumic and Shadow. And since blood spells have been hotfixed to not heal you anymore during this boss fight, basically the only way to defeat this boss is by using all four of the elemental spells. I am simply going to be using all four of the wave spells. Then the boss also has 4 special attacks, and if you don't want to take up to 40 damage each, then you will need to bring the following runes. The runes for Telegraph, which are Law and Air, Alchemy runes, which are Fire and Nature rune, Snare, Bind or Entangle spells, which are Nature, Water and Earth, as well as Weaken runes, which are Body, Water and Earth runes. Next, also bring one stamina potion to make our way back to the boss room, and maybe one or two prayer potions will be enough. And the rest of the inventory should just be some food. For the teleports, one teleport to the Black Knight's castle. The closest would be the Lassar teleport, or the Mind Alter teleport, or the Edgefield Monastery teleport on the combat bracelet, as well as two teleports to Valador. Next, also one teleport to any bank to prepare for part 4. Now for the equipment, make sure that you upgrade whatever you can. I don't think this account has anything better than this, so I'm going to be rocking this. Once you think you are ready, let's make our way back to the boss room. Since we've unlocked the shortcut earlier, just like a couple of minutes ago, let's simply go through the entrance.
We also no longer need our bronze medium helm as well as the iron chain body since the Dark Squall is the elite form more elite than the elite Black Knight. Let's go back down the ladder and go back to the cave system. Next, go north. By the way, nothing will attack us. We are the elite of the elite. And go through the southern solid door south of the archers. And then go north into not really the boss room, but that will lead to the boss room. Let's go northeast to a ladder. Now on our way there, if you want to, you could right click on your magic spellbook, enable spell filtering, and select do not show the teleport spells. Did I just fucking teleport? Are you serious? Next, climb up the ladder and click to continue to start the cutscene and start the boss fight. First, protect from magic must stay on at all times. Second, use any elemental spell of your choosing to damage the boss. Then, I also suggest you to stay away from the boss as far as possible so you can see which special attacks are coming your way. Keep your magic spellbook open at all times. Once you see a special attack, then you're able to react to what it is. The first special is either a slow surge spell coming at you, and to be able to negate that damage, you will need to destroy it by casting the opposite elemental spell on it. And the combinations are air and earth and fire and water. If one elemental surge spell has been cast, you will need to cast the opposite on it. Just make sure that before you're casting your opposite spell, that there isn't a pillar standing in your way. What? Two? Two? The fuck? Or, when there are multiple surges coming at you, that you don't misclick on the wrong one. Second, is that it will spawn an agile warrior that will run towards you and explode. We will need to cast Bind, Snare or Entangle to be able to defeat it. Third, is the same thing but then with a strong warrior, we will need to cast Weaken on it to be able to deal damage and defeat it. And for the fourth and the final special, the boss will throw lit explosives. Before they go off, cast Telegraph on it to put it in your inventory and then use alchemy on it to get rid of the bomb. Lastly, don't forget to heal from all the taken chip damage and you should be fine.
All right, once Zurich matches is down, let's turn off the prayers and let's plant orb by simply clicking on him. Once the big orb has planted, let's make our way back to Battle or Castle to talk to the three NPCs. This time we can talk to any of them. You may choose the one to your liking. Uh, the one that I like the most is the closest to the door. Once the conversation is over, let's open the cell gate and select option 1 to swap places with Shirok. Make sure that you bring a teleportation method out of the basement, else you will need to run all the way back. Once you've made it back to the hideout, let's climb down the ladder and go west and search the most western table. By searching it, you will gain one law rune and one death rune. These law and death runes may remain in your room pouch. Let's go back upstairs and go to the center of this room and then activate the strange tele orb to deep wilderness. Then go northeast, climb over the icy wall to not enter the wilderness. And afterwards we will need to jump the ledge by clicking on the tile that we're standing on to trigger a cutscene.
once the cutscene is over. Let's make our way back to Falador to talk to the remaining crew. You may talk to any of the three NPCs. After speaking to them, they have found Moverio, the guy that we have raided that base off. And now it is time for part 3. Let's make our way to any bank to prepare for the final part, unlocking the second boss room. Once again, I'm going to Ferris Enclave to restore all the stats. Let's go to the bank and deposit once again everything, inventory and equipment. What we will still need is the Dark Quell rope set and a Sapphire Lantern. What is recommended is to have as much inventory space as possible, up to a limit of 20. Doesn't matter if you have more than 20. Also bring some weight reducing clothing. Two teleports to Tears of Cathics. I'm going to be using a Games Necklace. And one teleport once again to any bank to prepare for the final boss fight. Once you think you are ready, let's make our way to Tears of Gothics for the Abyss section of this quest. Let's go north and climb up the rocks. There you should find Movario. Let's talk to him. And after speaking to them, we will need to right click and use our Sapphire Lantern on any of the light creatures that are not interacted with other players. Or simply left click on them, that's a thing now. Once we're in the abyss, next to us they'll find a skeleton. Search it for a spade, then southwest. Search it for some more tools, then go back northeast and use your spade on the rocks. Select option 1 twice to remove a fire orb, then go west. And then use your spade on some more rocks. Select option 1 twice to take an earth orb, then go south. Then inspect the air brazier to take the air orb. Then go east to find a blue brazier and then select yes to take the water orb. Next, let's go south and let's turn our camera south. On the way there, we may, dip, we may drop the three tools. Those are no longer needed. Also, we find three skulls. Next to the skull cavities, we'll find some research blocks next to a rune. Use your orb on it. The left one is air. The center one should be fire. And the right one is earth. Next, go back to the fire one, the middle one, and then climb up the ladder. Do so twice, and you'll find the final skull wall. Insert the water orb into it. And then climb back down. Next, we will need to enter the nose cavities of the three bottom skulls. Once you've entered one, crawl to the end. At the end, we'll find a mechanism with an element glowing on top of it. Simply insert the correct block and exit. And do the same with the other two cavities.
Once you've done that, let's climb up the wall twice again to go back to the bigger stone skull wall and insert the fire block or your final essence block on it. And by doing so, the stone cube next to you will now have an inspect option. Inspect it. Let's go through the mouth and let's go south. Keep going south until you see two green things, a brazier and a skeleton. First, let's search the skeleton to find a silver sickle and a druid pouch. And then let's inspect the brazier to have infinite prayer and stamina boost. Next, let's enter any tunnel and then go stand on any of the dead vines and then cast bloom. This will spawn some vine flowers. Pick those up. We will need to gather three more. And once we have three, we can right click on the druid pouch and fill it to get nine charges. Once we have this, use the pouch on any of the druid spirits to receive a herb and a herb or secondary. Do so until you've made it to the end of that tunnel. It does not matter which tunnel you start with. If you happen to not have enough inventory space for all of these herblore supplies and dolmens, then you can also get rid of these dolmens by using them one by one on the stone circle table in the center room, where we get our stamina boost. Once you've made it to the end of a cave tunnel, you'll find a statue. Inspect it and it will depict a certain activity that you can make a potion for. If you already got your hands on the herb and secondary needed to make that potion, then use both on the statue to receive a dolmen. If you didn't, just like me, then you can do this later. Next, it is time to go back to the center and enter another cave to release some more druid spirits. You could simply run back, but if you've taken a rather long cave, then you can also quick hop to another world to make your way back to the center. Once you're back, go back to the prayer and stamina brazier, and then enter another tunnel and reach it to the end to find what the next statue is. And on our way there, let's release some more spirits. There are eight statues, so we will need to release eight spirits. What kind of potion ingredients that you will need to use on a statue is random for everyone. Now I did say that the ingredients that you need to use on the altars is random for everyone, except for the south southeastern one, which is always the Gothic's balance potion from the in aid of the Margi quest, which isn't even a quest requirement. Alright, and that is basically it. Run around this cave system, use herbs and herbal supplies on the corresponding statues. And if the cave system is really long to get back to the center, which is basically northeast, east, south, southeast, and south, southwest, then simply use the world switcher and quick hop to another server to get teleported back to the entrance. Use a brazier in the center whenever needed.
Once you have received your ace dolmen, let's make our way back to the center by either quick hopping or running back, and then inspect south of the brazier the stone table. Inspect and say yes to place all the eight dolmens at once. Next, just south, the big door has been removed, and that way we have also unlocked the second boss room. But let's first go to the bank and prepare. Once again, I am going to Ferrox Enclave, even though that is not really needed. Let's deposit everything from our equipment and the inventory, and let's prepare for the final boss. What you'll still need is a sapphire lantern, as well as a switch to all three combat styles. The boss is weakest to heavy ranged ammo, so I'm going to be using a combination of ruby bolts and diamond bolts. For melee, it is weakest to crush, so I'm going to be using a leaf bladed axe set on crush. And for magic, the boss is pretty weak to magic, and it doesn't matter what you use, so I'm just going to be using a trident. Then I also suggest you to bring about four super restore potions. And that is because if you happen to miss an overhead prayer, the damage that the boss has dealt you is reduced from both your prayer points and your combat stats. For the rest of the inventory can simply be some good healing food. For the teleports, one back to Tears of Gothics to the boss room, and maybe one emergency teleport if you want to. Once you think you're ready, let's make our way back to Tears of Gothics, make our way back to Mavario, and use any of the light creatures, and select option 2 to go down into the abyss. Once we've made it back into the abyss, let's go back south, climbing up the wall twice to go to the upper, bigger stone skull and go back into the herbal room, also known as the Gothic Temple, where we can fight tormented demons after the quest is completed, and go south of it to the boss room. Once we have reached the Gothic Temple, let's first inspect the Brazier before it goes out of use. Let's get 100% Run Energy and Prayer, and let's go south. Keep running south until a cutscene starts. Make sure that your auto cost is ready, that your bolts are on rapid, and that your weapon is set on crush. And let's start hitting the boss with ranged. The boss will also start by using ranged, so start with using protect from ranged. I think the boss is weakest to heavy ranged ammo. So let's start the fight by trying to proc as many ruby bolts as possible. What I'm first gonna be doing is going to the other side of the Stone of Jazz, which is going to be a nice safe spot for whenever the boss is getting a little bit too difficult. If the boss is colored in an orange flame, that will mean it will use ranged and immediately activate Protect from Missiles. If the boss is white, 
then activate protect from melee. If he is blue, then activate protect from magic. If the boss changes overhead prayers to protect from missiles, then use any other combat style. But when the protect from missiles is turned off again, try to use ranged again and proc some ruby bolts. Once the boss has reached between 150 and 200 HP, first change your overhead prayer, then just mirror the combat style that it is using. Oh fuck, I'm dead. Oh. Nice. Once the Balanced Guardian has been defeated, let's touch the Stone of Jazz to trigger another cutscene and start battle phase number two. Nah, just kidding. We just have to feed two tormented demons before we can complete this quest. Also, since we have just touched the Stone of Jazz, our combat stats have just been boosted all the way to level 255, so the tormented demons' shield also don't really work anymore. The Tormented Demons also use three combat styles. If it attacks you with a small flame, then that is magic. If it is a yellowish cone, then that is ranged. And if they use scratch attack, then that is melee. TDs also use protection prayers. 
simply attack them with a combat style that they are not praying against. The TDs also have one special attack. When you hear or get binded, they will need to move away at least one tile. Also pay attention to which tile you're moving to, because that tile must not be darkened with a shade. Then, after you have been binded, that means that the tormented demons will also change their combat style. If they were attacking you with magic, they will need to probably use protect from range now. If you happen to get into trouble, you could also hide behind some of the pillars in this area and let the NPCs defeat the tormented demons. But this will take a while. And that is it. Enjoy your new max hits with your massively boosted stats and complete your quest. I have no idea how tormented demons work even today. Right, once the two tormented demons have been defeated, it is time to say goodbye to our good stats. Let's talk to the only NPC that we're able to talk to, Idria level 115. Say yes to teleport to Falador. And let's talk to any of the three NPCs to complete our quest. If you've already completed the quest Dragon Slayer 2, before the completion of this quest, they will also get an additional cutscene. And congratulations, you have completed while Gothic sleeps. You are awarded with 5 quest points, 50,000 hunter experience, 75,000 herb lore and farming experience, and 80,000 thieving experience. You now also have access to Tormented Demons, Ability to upgrade your Arc Light to an Ember Light, and Ability to craft a Demon Bane Bow and Staff. And your final reward is by talking to the Daughter of Durdal, selecting option 4 and 2 to get extra Slayer XP equal to 15 times your Slayer level. And this was my guide how to complete while Gothic sleeps. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, hit the comment. Okay, thanks, bye.